Hi guys. Well, as you can see, I have been busy. Um, <laughs> I'm a long way off from finishing anything. I've just literally thrown a few bits in that box in this tub. Um, all the rightful places are in the bedroom, but I want to clear the bedroom up before I sort that lot out. Um, pretty much cleared the sofa. I need to dismantle that drill for another video, then that can go in a bin. Um, got some Lego models to break up, just for some room. Well, actually, I've got that building there, not the vehicles, just the building. And that one there to do, and that pile of Lego to sort. And, uh, it's so time-consuming sorting Lego, though. Um, but my overflow box is full, so I have got a lot of choice. Uh, that drill's got to go back to my stepdad. I borrowed that when I uh, put the drill up. Put the drill up. Put the table up, not the drill. Because um, that's an SDS drill which made drilling into the wall a lot easier and a lot faster than using my um, Clark cordless. The Clark cordless is man enough to do it, but it was just so much easier using a proper SDS drill, which is why my uh, stepdad loaned me that one. Um, so I will say that for the walls in here, you know, they're not extremely tough, but then again, it is only brick. So, if you have a good drill bit and a good drill, that's actually breeze block, that wall. That's not red house brick, that's... Um, Breeze block. I do believe there's another name for them, and I can't remember. That's sort of probably two breeze block thick. I think that's breeze block anyway. If memory serves correctly, it might actually be um, standard red brick. Uh, a few things I'm going to put on eBay tonight. Um, yeah. It's a good job we didn't decide to do a car boot today because, as you can see, it's raining and it's been raining since about lunchtime and the car boot starts at 11 so we'd have had about an hour's worth of um, time before we'd have had to have packed up and come home. Hang on a minute, my sticky tape coming off. There we go. So, I, got, uh, I think I was right in saying to mum to leave today, to be honest. I'm hoping it's going to be fine tomorrow, but apparently the weather's not looking good, so... Um... Besides, I don't know how Mum expected to do a car boot today because uh, my stepdad had an appointment in the city. A um, um, doctor's appointment thing. I can't remember exactly, but uh, not one they needed. They um, had any leeway to miss. Ah, he had to go, so. Um, I've. Uh, had a bit of a sort out in the closet out on the landing there, um, outside the front door. Uh, so I can get a bit more, a few more bits in there, and I've stacked my um, racing bike frame in there, which is why it's not here. The ladies' falcon frame is downstairs. I've managed to, um, well, I'm going to replace the bearings anyway, but I just wanted to see if the um, cap was going to unscrew. Which it will, but I've just got the problem <laughs> of um, getting the crank off because I don't have a crank puller. Matt, oh, I know what I could do. I could go and see a friend actually and see if he's got one. Or better yet, I know Biggles has got a couple. He might loan me one. by asking nicely. Because <laughs> um, I really can't afford to go buy one at the moment, so that would help unless I to sell some crap on eBay, such as that Mega Drive console. Because the way I see it, if it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, then I'll just throw it in a cupboard and keep it as a spare and try again in the future. Because um, well that's... It's a gamble. When you're selling on eBay or even going to car boot sale, it is a gamble. Because you could list it on eBay, you're right, and not sell. Or won't sell. 
you could relist it. You may not sell them. You might relist it three or four times and it still won't sell. Take it down, leave it a couple of months or so, then list it back on eBay. And I've actually found <laughs> that sometimes your items will sell. It just depends who's looking and what people are looking for at the time when you list it. It's the same with car boot sales, really. You don't know who's going to turn up on and what they're looking for. Some people might have just gone just for a walk around for something to do on a Friday, Saturday or Sunday morning, or lunchtime I should say. It is near enough lunchtime it starts. Um, or they could be going, could be a collector going to look for something specific, or they could even be dealers, you know, looking for bargains to sell in their junk shops or whatever. I could guarantee I could probably get rid of that radio quite easily, but uh, Mum wants me to keep it. So I'm going to be keeping that for at least for the foreseeable future. Um, but I know I could easily shift it if I wanted to, but uh, I'd probably get knocked because of the cable and whatnot. And so I know what people are like at car boots, they always want a bargain. And uh, some people, if they can find a, a fault, they'll mention it. Just to try and get it cheaper. Which is, well, I suppose it's fair enough, you know. Everyone likes a bargain, don't we? Even I like a bargain, so, you know, I'm not complaining that people do that. <coughs> uh. I just thought I'd have a bit of a spruce up in here, just for something to do really, because I can't do anything outside, so I can't even do anything to that lady's bike. What I might actually do, is I have actually tightened the bearings up, tightened the cones up, and they have tightened up fine. I'll get the bike in rideable condition and all working and whatnot, and take it for a spin, and um, just see how the bottom bracket bearings go. If they come loose, they'll get replaced. If they don't come loose, and they do still ride fine, because I've tied the bearings up and spun them by hand, and they do feel nice and smooth. There's no grinding, no noises or anything. So they may have just rattled loose, or just worn down a little bit, and just need a little bit of a adjustment, because sometimes you can get away with just adjusting it. Um... Although that does, it still means that at some point in the future they'd need replacing anyway, so. It's a decent frame, so I'd like to replace them, but I think just for the time being I'll leave them as they are. And I'll see if I can borrow a um, crank extractor from someone. Uh, I think Biggles might be my best bet, as I'll probably be over Mum's at some point this weekend. So uh, I'll ask him. I don't think he'll say no. I've loaned him my tools as well before because um, I've got tools that he hasn't got and he has needed before. Um, the bottom bracket pullers, you know, the ones with the um, multiple teeth on, that go on, um, that's it, the um, sealed and semi sealed type of bottom bracket removers. I've got a couple of those. Um, the Biggles hasn't got them. I really do need to invest in a few more um, tools, I think. So I kind of wish I didn't murder my um, own crank extractor. But I can't complain because it did... For some reason there's a cyclist doing circles in the car park. I'm not sure what, they, what he was doing. Get in the right gear, I think. Yeah. Oh well. There's actually a bicycle locked up just... Because QD's is just over there. You can, that pointed roof right there above my finger. That's the um, drugstore. Not the drugstore, the co-op. Is it the co-op? Superdrug. Oh, I can't bloody remember. It's one of them. I think it's actually Superdrug. You see the chimney stack right here. 
right above my finger, not this big tall one, the little one there, that's um, where QD Stores is. It used to be a hotel many years ago. Um, but thankfully, when it was converted to Woolworths in the 80s, when Woolworths was still thriving, um, they kept all the main building, built this whacking great extension on the back, and um, kept the chimney stacks as well, because they're beautiful looking chimney stacks. You can't see them from here properly, but... Um, but right beside QDs is a um, couple of bike racks. Well, they're basically just bars you can lock your bike to. Someone's locked the bike there, but the handlebars are not bolted on. They're the threadless type. And I don't know if someone's actually taken them off so no one nicks the bike, but I did find it lying on the floor last night. Um, which is a bit of a pain in the ass because that meant no one could get there to uh, lock the bikes up. So as I walked past, I just picked it up and leaned it up. I don't know if someone tried to nick it or what. There was two, and the other one's gone, including the lock. So I assume the owner came back and got that one. But I'm not sure about <laughs> this other bike that's there. You know, it's locked. It is locked with a decent lock, so. I don't know if someone has left it there and planned to come back for it at some point. Who knows? Um, on the odd occasion, I do find the um, odd dumped bike around town. Um, I actually found one. This is the council office building here, and I have found one round the front in the gravel one night when I went to get my uh, cash out of the hole in the wall. Um, I fixed it all up, because it was a bit beat up, naturally. So I fixed it all up, and I was riding it, and I left it out there, down by the trailer, leaning against the wall. Went down at about 9 o'clock in the evening. It was summer, it was this time of year, and some fucker had nicked it. And I think what actually pissed me off the most is, because I had mum and my stepdad and my little brother living here with me at the time as well, none of us noticed. And I think what actually pissed me off the most is, you know, it wasn't an expensive bike. It was only worth 25 quid if I sold it. Maybe 30 at a push. It was a nice bike to ride, though. I did enjoy riding it. Um, but what pissed me off the most was that they managed to do it right from under my nose. And I didn't notice. And no one in here noticed. None of us noticed. There's four of us here and no one noticed. So I think I was probably more... <coughs> oh, dear. Probably more pissed off at myself with that, rather than, like I said, it wasn't a great loss, not financially anyway, so it wasn't worth a great deal. Um, I'd be livid if my Claude but Butler ever got nicked. That's, um, I keep, actually I've had quite a few compliments around town for that bike, people calling that a nice bike. Um, I'm still <laughs> trying to get the friggin' brakes to work properly. I can stop so long if I'm racing around at high speed there's no way I'm gonna stop for anything in time, so at the moment I am just using it to pop to Sainsbury's where I can just cruise at low speeds and I know I'm gonna stop. Because if I have to hit him in a hurry I ain't stopping, especially at speed. Um so I think when money permits I'll uh see if I can get a brand new set on ebay or something complete with calipers pads and discs and put those on it because otherwise that's just being a pain in the friggin ass everything else works fine on it, on it rather typical of my Norfolk you know all the words just sort of roll into one <laughs> well actually with the Norfolk accent we tend to um Take a lot of letters out, especially vowels. If you ever listen to, especially someone who's got a very broad Norfolk accent. Um, there's actually videos here on YouTube, and it's quite funny, actually. There's videos on here taking the rise right out of the Norfolk accent. And the scary thing is, most of it is actually true. <laughs> Uh, you've got to laugh at yourself, haven't you? I don't know if anyone out there is a fan of Family Guy, but I do watch that occasionally. And, um, 
one thing I've learned with that show is that it doesn't matter what nationality you are, you're not safe from having the rise taken out of you. Um, Family Guy has targeted tab there. I'll try again. Family Guy has targeted us English or us British several times using the stereotypical um, well-spoken British accent, you know, and the suits and the the horrible dentures. <laughs> I don't actually know where that stereotype can come from because it must have come from donkeys years ago. Because nowadays, you know. With dentists and whatnot, we've probably got the same sort of. It comes a siren. What is it? It is police car. <laughs> Donuts must be on offer in Sainsbury's. Oh, <laughs> I had to go there. <laughs> what the hell was I talking about? Oh yeah, dentists or dentistry. Yeah. I'd love to know where that um, poor dentistry stereotype came from for us British. <laughs> I really would. I've got no idea myself. <clears throat> but some of the characters Family Guy have on there that are British, you know, with all the, the buck tooth and the... Um, there's even a character that's been on there a couple of times that's got... Um, uh, Quite a huge underbite, well over exaggerated underbite actually. <laughs> That's what makes it funny, you know. It's not a joke if it's not exaggerated. And if any Brit any fellow British gets offended at things like that, then I think they're a sap. It's only a bloody joke. Like I said, with that show, it doesn't matter where you're from, even America. You'll get the piss taken out of you on that show. I know Family Guy's not everyone's cup of tea, but that's just like anything, really, isn't it? You know? Some people really love cars and engines, and other people don't. Other people, some people might like art, and others don't. You know, we've all got our own tastes and interests and likes and dislikes. I'm just not one of these that feel the need to go and uh, slam people for it and bully them for it just because they like something. Although that does seem to be an internet thing. I don't know what it is with the internet, but people always feel the need to um, act like the big man behind their computer and uh, attack people for, well, whatever they can, really. Any excuse they come across. But, uh, what can you do apart from ignore them? I know people call them trolls, but... Or, I've done trolling in myself on a few people on YouTube and whatnot, and I really don't see what the, um... fuss is about, you know, or what the interest is in trolling. I don't understand why people do it. But I suppose, like anyone, all trolls are different. You no, know, you'll just get the trolls that are just outright nasty, which to me isn't trolling, it's just being a prick. And you'll get the trolls that will, um... That, well, the way I say it is that they do it correctly. And, uh, that's meant to be inverted commas, by the way, if you're wondering what that is. <laughs> I've only got the one hand free, so I only do it... With the one hand. But yeah, you do get the trolls that I say do it correctly by um, deliberately baiting you into an argument and, uh, well, every time you reply, they keep replying. You know, their replies may not be exactly their view on a subject, but they're probably, you know, they'll make up a load of bollocks to be on the opposite side of the of the debate, just debate you into a comment. And I've fallen for that before, many times. And I sit there thinking, what a twat. I've fallen for trolls' antics. Oh, bloody itchy back today.
I must throw my head in. Oh dear. I wonder what I'm going to have for tea tonight. I haven't got that far yet. It's actually nice to be able to walk around this part of the floor. Do a little dance while we're at it. I think me and Mum worked out it's about three weeks till my friend arrives on British soil via the train. It's a hell of a trip via the train, you know. He's got to go from his town into Paris, then from Paris to London, then from London on the underground to Liverpool Street to get the train up to Norfolk and then transfer again to come to um, my town. Yeah, that is a heck of a trip. I know the train doesn't actually take long to get from France to here. I don't know what time he's going to be leaving in the morning. Oh, fuck. That means I'm going to have to sort some sort of telephone out and give him the new number. Otherwise I won't know when he's arriving because he wouldn't be able to text me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Mustn't forget to do that. Hopefully I'll get my sat... Oh, that's what I was going to... Oh no. Uh, my brother's got a phone lying up on his um, bedside cabinet that won't charge, but um, he said the battery itself has got a bulge in it which would indicate a knackered battery. So I might actually collywog that off his desk next time I go over. And, uh... Or when I go up there to get the um, computer table. And, uh... Bring that over and see if I can get it to work. Because the problem with my Samsung is the battery doesn't hold charge for long. It needs a new battery. And if you're wondering why, after all these months, that I haven't got one, despite knowing it's got a wanked battery on it, it's because I barely use it anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to fork out money on something that I don't really use and don't have a need for. Because, uh, as far as internet goes, I'd rather go through there and sit on the, um, on the PC or a laptop. Mostly because my eyesight is shit and I prefer a screen that I can actually see things on. <laughs> so, apart from making the odd phone call, maybe, or receiving the odd text and call, I don't really have a use for a hoodie flippy. A phone. Which is why I've pretty much just stuck to the landline. Anyway, I've rambled on a bit there, haven't I? Uh, is there anything else specific? I think I'm going to take a few bits off this. The shit bits, if I can. And, uh... Well, actually, seeing these people walk through here has just reminded me, but I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, I'm going to strip some of the knackered bits off of this. Ready, because I think that frame, once it's all been polished up and all the mud's been taken off of it, and the filth, I think that would be an alright frame for, for, you know, a cheaply runabout frame sort of thing. You know, I've, I've got plenty of wheels, I've got the brake calipers, I've got cables, I can soon put that back together again. Uh, I've got a handlebar, or at least a better one than that one. got stems, if that stem comes out of there. Point the camera in the right direction, you numpty. That would help. Uh, I don't... <laughs> Might clean up those forks enough. They work. See? They do work. It's just the yellow paint has obviously been in sunlight and faded. And that reflector's got a bit of an icky colour. A faded colour. That r I'm going to take a... Um, I've got a bit of steel wool somewhere. I think it's in that... Oh yeah, I can just see it over there. I'm just going to see if I can um, 
how well that's going to come up. I mean, the odd speck of rust wouldn't matter too much. I might get a majority of that off, so it, so uh, it at least looks somewhat respectable. And like I said, just clean up the back end and put the wheels back in. Because, um, trust me, by the time I clean that rust off, change the handlebar and stem, clean it up, and put different brake calipers on that aren't actually rusty shit like that, it would look like a completely different bike. But, um, I suppose you've got to be willing to um, put that sort of effort in. But uh, I know some people say, well, that's a lot of effort for little money gained, but what can you do in this day and age when you want the extra bit of pocket money for things? You know, you're not going to get money by sitting on your ass, and if you've got to work your ass off to get it, then so be it. I'm not scared of uh, working. Plus I like to recycle and like I said that frame is good enough. You know, it's not super duper spectacular, excellent, you know, expensive. I reckon this was, I can see this was a budget bike when that was um, bought new. No more than a hundred quid new. Actually I would say that's probably less than that when that was new. And I bet you, despite all the rust on this, I bet that's not actually that many years old either. <laughs> but uh, that's why I hate, absolutely hate this style of metal um, calipers. Because they're chrome. And uh, well, some of them are chrome, and you get some that are actually painted black. But that doesn't matter if they're chrome or painted black, they rust. And they go shit like that. And the same with the handlebars, you know, you can tell, look, you can tell it's a budget bike. Shitty calipers, shitty grip shifts. Gears don't work. <laughs> Do the rear droning move. I've never had a dry, uh, um, shifter like that on there. It's almost like they've put a um, front shifter on here. They have. No, they haven't, because um, it's round the other way. They've got high here at the bottom and low there, whereas they've got low here and high round here. <laughs> right. Definitely a budget bike. Well, as the gears don't seem to be shifting, that's an indication that the cables are jammed. I don't really think I need to do this right this minute. Uh... However, my friend who's come over has said he'd like a bike done for him, so I will have to get a couple of cables and do the blue magnet down there. I would like to clear some room in the shed so I can get a couple of the bikes in there. Uh, I've got this horrible feeling we won't be doing a car boot in the morning. Because, uh... When is the fucking time? Ah, 4.24, I thought it was. Um... I wonder if I can get that camera down there out of the way. Maybe if I shunt the sofa towards the radio here for a moment. Because I think it will, but the arm of the chair is in the way. Right, that's the other thing I want to do this evening, because it's a quiet job, is um, sort my paperwork out into that folder. Because I've got shed loads of it, and uh, sort out what I need to shred. So I've got a little hand crank shredder over there. That'll do. I think I paid a pound for it out of the all sorts shop. Needs a bit of unclogging done, which I'll have to do, but... It does work. Uh, okay. I keep 
lose the motivation. If motivation equals zero. And I'm gonna stuff that tub in the outside cupboard as well. It's got all my bike chain in it. Uh, uh, uh. Oh yeah, I lost the email for the address to post those lights to. So I contacted the person asking for his address because I'd lost the email, and all he sent back was thanks. <laughs> so couldn't quite work that one out. I don't know if he was half asleep when he read my email, or you know, I've got a notification on YouTube. Oh, Julian Eilert. 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 I think it's Eilert. Help. I do hate pronouncing names. Let's just check emails and see if they've replied again. PPI claims. No, I don't want fucking PPI claims. Bugger off. Keep getting ones and um, spam emails that say, plan my funeral. No. I'm 31, not fucking 81. Do not want to plan my funeral yet. I know life is crap, but it's crap for a majority of us, so... <laughs> and it might be crap, but I don't want to pop my clogs yet. You know? My life may not be very exciting, but it's still my life, and I still enjoy living it. I'll put the ladybird outside. I'm sure I'll leave him there for the time being. I do wish his camera had better people focus on it, but oh. he flew down there. I thought I'd knocked him off, but his wings were out, so I'm guessing he flew. You want to say hello as well before I turn the camera off, do you? Right. Molten like a bitch, cat. Fuh. It could be worse. I could have two dogs up here, then I'd know what molten is. I think I'm lucky that I've just got the cat. Because mum's two dogs, as fast as she vacuums the carpet, it's almost like she has a second layer of carpet. Called dog hair. <laughs> Not long after she vacuums. That's the joys of owning a dog. Anyway, we're coming up to the um, time limit on this before it um, switches over and starts again. So uh, I'm going to say goodbye. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon.